what's going on guys? It's K Titan here with a brand new video for you guys. But first things first, as always, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today's video, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. I have been getting a lot of requests to do a general guide for alternate balloon drowns. Now this general guide will work for a majority of the beginner maps. Now hopefully by doing this strategy a few times over you guys will start like noticing some of the weak points and how to actually improve it yourself but for beginners and people who are just starting to get into balloons and are struggling with the alternate balloon drowns this strategy will work for you now the strategy does have a couple of different variations depending on which maps you're playing on because of course maps like monkey meadow and tree stump they do not have any water whereas maps like lotus island and candy falls they both have water so there's a couple there's a there's one tower that you can actually replace with a different tower, depending on if you have water on the map or not. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Oh, one more thing. I, I almost forgot to say we will have our monkey knowledge turned off and we, we will not be using a hero. So feel free to throw in whatever hero you want. Feel free to turn on your monkey knowledge because, of course, having more money and having your hero is going to make this a lot easier to actually pull off. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the actual guide. So the first thing that we are going to be starting off with on every alternate balloon drowns, at least at least with me, is going to be a ninja monkey. Now the ninja monkey is great for alternate balloon drowns because, of course, some of the starting rounds you will you will face off against a couple of camo balloons. That way you don't need to worry about like buying a dart monkey or anything crazy like like that and wasting a bunch of money off the start. Now one problem that we have with our or with not using monkey knowledge is of course round four you're going to get this massive rush of blue balloons and unfortunately unless we bought a dart monkey we cannot deal with all these balloons so we will lose a couple of lives here it's not that big a deal because we do have 100 lives to work with so we'll just go ahead and eat those then we'll go ahead and upgrade to ninja discipline at this point all right, the next thing that we want to go for is because, again, this is alternate balloon drowns, we are going to get a couple of uh, a couple of different balloons that we normally don't get when we're playing on normal modes, mainly the lead balloons. So the one thing that we're going to get in order to combat the lead balloons is we're going to get an alchemist because, of course, an alchemist can pop lead balloons no matter what upgrade path you go. The only up the only balloons that it cannot pop are going to be the camo lead balloons hence why we have the ninja here all right so now at this point we have our alchemist the next thing that we want to do with our alchemist is we want to set his targeting over to strong because we don't want the Al alchemist to accidentally throw a a potion on a balloon and miss a lead balloon because if you miss a lead balloon that's a lot of lives that you're going to lose so in order to avoid losing uh, more lives than we actually want to, we're, we're going to go ahead and just rely on our alchemist to pop the lead balloons until we get enough money to upgrade it to larger potions and then acidic mixture dip, which will allow our ninja monkey to actually pop the lead balloons. Next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be buying seeking shurikens. And then from this point on, we are good for the start of alternate balloon drowns. Now this will work for a majority of maps, even past some of the beginner modes. The, the reason why this strategy won't work on some of the more expert maps is because the some of the ex expert maps are a little bit more complicated. So uh, I will be doing another one of these guides once we start getting into more or the more harder and difficult maps. But for this point or at, at this point in the game, this is more than enough to deal with all of these different balloons. All right, next thing that we want to do is we want to buy larger potions and acidic mixture dip because we are going to be facing a couple of camo leads here in a couple of rounds. And of course, we need to have a tower that can see lead balloons. So we're going to go ahead and give our ninja monkey the power to see lead or pop lead balloons, as well as being able to passively see camo balloons. All right, now the next thing that we're going to be doing is we are going to be upgrading our ninja monkey to double shot. And then the next thing that we're going to be doing past double shot is we're going to be buying balloon jitsu. All right, and then it is a little bit more expensive to go with a balloon jitsu. But believe me, guys, it is 112% worth it to go ahead and go for a balloon jitsu. Opposed to going with a different tower to start with. Because, of course, we're going to get this tier 4 on the field ASAP. And as soon as we get it on, we are going to be 100% set. Now, some of the things that make alternate balloon drowns hard is the reinforced Moab balloons. Those, those definitely pose a challenge for no matter what comp you have. 
So we're actually going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a tower that's going to change change this mode from an alternate balloon drowns over to a normal game of hard mode. And the best tower to do that is going to be the mortar monkey. But unfortunately, we need to make it to the point where we can actually be able to afford the mortar monkey. And of course, because uh, it's such an such a expensive tower, we're not going to be able to afford it until like we're mid game. But it is one of the first towers that we end up getting past round 40. All right, next thing that we're going to be doing is we are going to be finish, finishing the upgrade path on our alchemist. It shouldn't take us too long to actually be able to afford it, but we will be able to afford it here in just one second. All right, there's our Berserker Brew. Now we're going to be saving up for a stronger stimulant. Now, once we buy the stronger stimulant, this is where the, ver the variation and strategy can come in. You can either go with the monkey ace or you can go with the monkey sub. So if... For example, say you had water here, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be using it for this guide, but say you had water on the map. You could already buy a monkey sub and it's super, super cheap, even with no monkey knowledge whatsoever. So the monkey sub is actually a really good tower to go with, opposed to going with the monkey ace. But because we're playing on a map that does not have any water, unfortunately, we're only able to go with the monkey ace. Now, the, now, is the Monkey Ace the only tower that you, you can go with? No, of course it's not because we're playing Balloons. There are so many different towers that you can pair with this combo. But I'm trying to go with the easiest to set up. And of course, the, the strategy where you don't have to worry about using abilities or anything crazy like, like that. All right, now that we have the Monkey Ace, we're going to place it out of range of our Alchemist because we don't want our Alchemist to try and buff the Monkey Ace and also buff the Ninja Monkey at the same time. Now, depending on the map that you're playing on, you can either go for the Figure 8 or you can go with the Figure Infinite. Now, I generally go with the Figure 8 depending on the map. Both are really good choices You for... Uh, for Monkey Meadow, I would kind of recommend going with the Figure Infinite over going with the figure eight because it's going to be on the track the entire time and i believe you're going to be able to hit a few more balloons all right next thing that we're going to be going with is we're going to go ahead and go with spy plane because if we're going to have the monkey ace on the field we might as well have it help out our ninja monkey with popping camel balloons the reason why i chose to go with the monkey ace is because the monkey ace does lots of damage to moab class balloons and of course because this is alternate balloon drowns it makes it a little bit more difficult for our ninja monkey to actually be able to pop the reinforced moab balloon so to counter or to kind of counteract that we're going to go ahead and get a another tower that can uh, kind of deal with the moab balloons a little bit easier than our ninja monkey can all right, next thing that we're going to be going for is we're going to be going for a Shattering Shells Mortar Monkey. Now, you guys may be a little bit confused here because uh, normally we'd want, we'd want to go for like a Wizard Monkey or something like, like that that has a little bit more damage and popping power. But what Shattering Shells does is it will rip off the reinforcement from Ceramic Balloons, from Moab Balloons, from BFBs. The only reinforcement that it will not rip off is from ZOMGs. DDTs and of course bad balloons if if you wanted that you need to up upgrade it to the tier 5 balloon generation But we are only playing on alt alternate balloon rounds We're not playing on impoppable mode or trying to go for a super high round Hence why we're going to be going for these shattering shells because it's it's it, it's, it's a little bit pricey But believe me guys is 112% worth it All right, so we should be able to afford the shattering shells here in just one second and we are almost on round 50 So that's so that's what I mean by you're not gonna be able to afford this tower until like late game Hence, but it does make the late game a lot easier All right, next thing that we want to do is we actually want to change this to a little bit further on because we do want to rip off that uh, Reinforcement from the Moab balloons and the DDT or not the DDTs, but the reinforcement from all the balloons and the Moabs before they actually get into range of our ninja monkey. All right, next thing that we're going to be going for is we're going to be going for a wizard monkey. Now, the next thing, or we're going to upgrade it all the way to an arcane spike with intense magic and then monkey sense as well. Again, the arcane spike is a little bit on the pricey side, but it is 112% worth it to go ahead and go with the arcane spike. Another thing that I need to make sure you guys know about is... If you have more than one tower within range of your alchemist, it is a good idea to get faster throwing because if there's more than one tower within range of the alchemist, the alchemist may actually struggle to go ahead and buff both the or both towers that are within its range. 
Unless they changed it, I do believe that the Alchemist can buff up to three towers at the same time, as long as they are within range of the Alchemist. And you have faster throwing. All right, next thing, like I said, we're going to be going for Arcane Spike. It is a little bit on the pricey side, but we should be able to afford it without an issue. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, let me see. The Arcane Spike is 11,000, but again, it is 112% worth it to actually go with the Arcane Spike. The next tower that we're going to be going with past Arcane Spike is going to be another Wizard Monkey that's upgraded to the Center Pathway. Because a Center Pathway Wizard... Uh, you, well, you guys will see here in a second. It, it is amazing at dealing with uh, loose, loose, loose balloons. It's not the best at dealing with the Moab balloons, but that's why we go with the top tier Wizard Monkey first because the Arcane Spike deals with Moab balloons and BFBs super, super easy. All right, like I said, the next thing that we're going to be going for is we're going to be going for the Dragon's Breath with Intense Magic and Monkey Sense. That way you can see Camo balloons because you could go with a Monkey village but i feel like the monkey sense is a little bit of a cheaper option in the long run all right now that we have dragon's breath this is going to be the basis of your strategy now from this point on you can go with pretty much whatever tower setup you would like to just as long as you're adding popping power as the map pro progresses for this guide i will be adding a glue gunner here now this glue Gunner, I want to place it outside of range of our of our, Al our Al alchemist here because I do not want the alchemist to buff the glue gunner. We only want the glue gunner to assist in slowing down the Moab balloons and slowing down the balloons themselves. Next thing that we want to go for is we also want to go for a boomerang monkey here. Now this, now this boomerang monkey in the very back is basically going to be like, all right, if any balloons slip through, this, bo this boomerang monkey is going to be able to take care of any balloons that slip through. So it's kind, it's kind of like a, using the spike factory. It will uh, allow us to make a little bit of mistakes when when placing down these towers in the very front. It's not a end all be all composition, but or not, it's it's not a end all be all tower. But it is very, very good to have in the back, especially with the more glaives and the glaive ricochet. All right, next thing that we want to go with is we want to get a little bit of Moab stall going on. Because, of course, our biggest issue is going to be the Moab balloons again. So what we can do to kind of slow down the Moab balloons and what you're going to need to do in some of the harder maps, we're going to go with a Moab press. Now, what the Moab press does is it actually slows down like BFBs, it slows down the blue Moabs, and it's a great tower to go ahead and slow down towers, making it easier for your front towers here to go ahead and pop balloons. Now, with the Mo Moab press, you can go with faster throwing, but I generally go with glaives because I want the boomerang monkey to do a little bit more damage to the Mo Moab balloons. Now, you can go with faster throwing, like I said, but for this guide, I'm going to be upgrading it to glaives. I now, now you guys can see an example of what the boomerang monkey does, especially paired with the glue gunner. It really slows down those Moab balloons and actually gives our towers a little bit of a chance to go ahead and deal with the Moab balloons. One thing that we do want to upgrade the glue gunner to is we do want to upgrade the glue gunner to a zero to three, of course, because we do want the Moab glue. One thing you can change is if you guys are struggling with camo balloons or stuff like that, you can upgrade to Re Relentless Glue. Now, a lot of people don't like to upgrade to Relentless Glue because they feel like it's kind of a worthless upgrade. But with Relentless Glue, uh, when you, when a balloon is popped that has the glue on it, it will actually leave, leave a glue pile below it, right? And that glue pile will actually affect camo balloons. So it passively gives your glue gunner the ability to hit camel balloons without actually giving it the buff in order to actually hit camel balloons all right next tower that, that we're going to go with is of course we're going to be dealing with two zomgs because of course this is all filtering at balloon drowns so we need to go ahead and add a little bit of moab popping power now we're not going to go too intense here the only thing we're going to go with is we're going to be going with Two, three, zero bomb shooters, and that is it. We're, we're not going to go crazy with, with, with these. We'll probably end up buying three of these just to make sure that we have enough Moab popping power because, of course, the only downfall of this sh strategy is we don't have a lot of Moab popping power because we're not going with any tier fives. 
Now, if you guys wanted to switch things up, you guys will have more than enough money to buy the Crossbow Master. And of course, the Crossbow Master does massive amounts of damage to both Moab balloons and uh, normal balloons as, as well. So that's another option that you guys could go with. But again, I want to try and make this as easy as possible to or for you guys to use. So I'm going to go ahead and stick away from the Tier 5s, and we're mainly going to stick to using Tier 3s and Tier 4s. All right, now that we have these three uh, bomb shooters, the next thing that we're going to be going for is... Um, actually, I think that's it. Yeah, so we have a bunch of stall here. If you wanted to kind of base, base your strategy off of, off of mine and what I would do from this point on, is I would just be adding more, uh, more Moab presses at this point in time. Because we have a lot of... Well, we don't have a lot, a lot of Moab damage but we have enough we have enough stall to help out with the moab balloons we have enough enough moab popping power at least for abr modes but of course if you're trying to do deflation mode this strategy won't do very well but you would definitely need to go ahead and grab and grab yourself a little bit more popping power so a tier 5 would definitely be worth it all right so we should be able to upgrade to a couple more moab presses here again the moab presses are just to slow down the bfbs and to slow down the blue moab balloons as, as well making sure that our wizard monkey and our ninja monkey can deal with the moab balloons with no issues all right and from this point on we are pretty much 100 percent good to go we're j i'll just go ahead and play play this out so you guys know that this can uh deal with round 79 and round 80 especially round 80 because you're going to be dealing with two zomgs hence why i got all of the boomerang monkeys and of course i got the bomb shooters in the back as well all right and as you guys can may or may not notice the boomerang monkeys can also push back the zomgs so we're able to do a lot more damage to the zomgs making easy work of round 79 and round 80 but anyways guys i want to say thank you guys so much for the support on the channel it has been absolutely amazing I also want, want to say, uh, don't forget, as soon as we hit 3K subs, we will be doing a 12-hour live stream on YouTube. That way, for those those of you who don't like Twitch or really don't find uh, Twitch too appealing, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to catch a stream uh, on YouTube opposed to trying to figure out Twitch and actually creating a new Twitch account. So as soon as we hit 3K subs, you guys can look forward to seeing that. But anyways, guys, again, thank you so much for the support. And of course, as always, I hope you guys have the most amazing day of your lives. And I'll see you guys in the next one.